So, um, continuing on this uh, more advanced rig tying with Steve. Steve's shaking his head, it's not advanced rig tying, but it's it's more than basic rig tying, should we say. It's the next stage up from basic rig tying. Uh, we're back with Steve, and so what are you going to show us today, Steve? I'll show you what I use when it's pretty rough weather, uh, and you are struggling to get a three-hook rig out, and you go down to a two-hook rig, but that still doesn't work for you. So I'll show you what I use, which is similar to a bagnall bar, but I make it out of nylon. So um, I've got a wishbone rig here as it's set up, but I can show you um, a, 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 pull, um, a panel rig and uh, also a, a running rig for if you want to go for stingrays and you just want to get that extra distance. Okay, cool. So these, these rigs uh, have very short uh, uh, body lengths. They're about 35 centimetres. And the idea is that uh, they make a bolt rig if you're using them on a running ledger or with the other other rigs you can either have them from running from the top or through the through the bottom like a normal uh, normal rig so we tie that up with so what, what breaking strain is that piece of line you got in your okay, hand okay so this is 80 pound again 80 pound okay yeah so the other bits we need are all here hook length I like the ones with the swivels on for this particular rig uh, lead link with swivels on cascades small number six diamond head swivels on one end and I use these breakaway let's actually see what they're called adjustable crimps and this okay. is what I, I use I use most of these on most of my rigs even my clipped rigs because or you can adjust them so if you want to change your hook size you can if you want to change the length of the rig you can and it's very quick and easy to do so we tie the lead link on first of all again with a five turn tucked blood knot that's lubricated down I mean, lots of people like different things for making their rigs, grease weasel and bits and pieces. I uh, personally are quite happy with this. And it's all about personal preference. And, and having confidence in what you're using, isn't it? Is yeah. that if, if you're confident, it'll work. So we'll do this one from uh, coming off of the base of the rig. So we put on a three millimeter bead. We'll put on the diamond eye and round eye swivel. Put the round eye on the leader. Another bead. And then what you can do if you want is you can crimp that down there so that doesn't move. But I actually like to have it floating. So we get one of these breakaway adjustable crimps. You get the crimp part. And then you get the rubber tongue. It's very, very simple. Insert the rubber thin end into the crimp, pull it through, and when you cut it off, there's a hole at the other end as well. Excellent. Definitely going to go into my repertoire of retying kit. So I slide that on. And then another three millimeter bead. And, and as explained, the beauty of these these um, crimps is that you can move your your rigs up and down. So, yeah. I mean, if, if you if you lose a hook snood or lose a hook on your snood, you always know there's going to be a pain on the beads getting it adjusted up to work work right again. But with this, you can just adjust everything around and, and get your, your, the, the same rig working. Yep, I'll put a rig spring on. Another size 6 swivel. And another bead. Now, I put a lead link on mine, all my rigs, at the top end. A lot of people have swivels. 
And that's because I have a swivel on my main line okay. and not a lead link. Because I find sometimes when you're fishing, the trace line will go over and between there. Right. So I found by doing it the other way, that doesn't happen. Just trim it off after doing that blood knot and then you can see that there's the basic setup of the rig and the advantage with this little board is I can now bring the tensioner down and clip it up so you can see lead clip with a swivel that's the type I'm using on this one I like it because especially fishing with the fixable reel as I do that that spins a lot. We have a bead, a swivel, a bead. This can then slide up and down here so it can fish in all different tide times. And then the top hook, uh, top swivel is here and the crimp. So that's the, that, that's the sort of the equivalent of a bagnall bar but it had, yeah. made it a nylon, yeah? Yeah. So then I'm dialed into my little box here and I'll use the colours that you can probably see better. So I'll use 25 pound black amnesia for this, which is what I make up a lot of the rigs with. So again, tying this with a five turned tucked blood knot. Lubricate it, pull it down. Now, I can decide how long a trace I want at this point. I can have it as long as I like. I can go to a metre long, half a metre long. So you can, if you're fishing, this works very well on an ebb tide. Um, so I like it roughly about 80 centimetres long. So measure it from here, we're at 10. We go up to 90. So that's what I've got to start off with. And I tie the cascade swivel on. Again with the same knot. So there's your, there's your basic rig. All ready to go. One little error there, tied it on the wrong swivel. <laughs> You're saying it's advanced. Oh, even the experts make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Not an expert. Here we go. There we are, so there's the basic rig. And then the idea is this cascade doing well this morning. Oh no, that's right. It's so the beauty of making videos I can edit. Yeah. So now what we could choose is what type of hook rig we want on there. So I'll I'll start off with the um, wishbone rig. So that I know that will clip into there now. So I know I can have a wishbone rig as long as I like. So I like about 20, 25 centimetres on each side of the wishbone. So that's 50 centimetres of line, give or take. So the first thing to go on is a rig stop. You'll see why I put these ones on. And I'll put it on a small bead. And I'll put it through the cascade. And 
another small bead. These are three millimetre clear ones. And then another rig stop. So that's in place now, so you've got the two pieces of your wishbone. So then another rig stop goes on and you'll see, see why in, in a moment. And then we'll put some uh, green beads on. And some black beads on. Start off with green and black. Now you don't have to have beads, I just think it attracts a flatfish. I was going to say the flatfish rigs when yeah. you're using green and black, yeah. And then uh, put a sequin on. And then I'll put on the Tony's Tackle C Match Size 2s. Brilliant hook as far as I'm concerned. They're very, very sharp as you saw that sticking in my finger. They've also got a nice offset on them so that you can, that really helps keep the worm on and also hook the fish. But as you can see, my box has got all sorts of hooks in it. Again, five turn tuck blood knot, lubricated and trimmed off but I always leave a bit on the hook because I find it holds, holds the worm on. That's one side. Now you could use different coloured beads if you wanted to. Uh, sometimes I put red and orange on the other side. Uh, especially if I'm using ragworm, I find red and orange works better with ragworm. Uh, just if you've got a choice of baits, what you can do. You can put as many or as few beads on. You can put no beads on if you wish. And then we put another hook on. And there we go. There's the hooks, the beads, and the stops, and the sequins in position. And then the stop I've got up here, when you fish a wishbone, it's really nice to have one length longer than the other. So the reason the other stops there is just so that when it goes out in the tide, this is how it will go out. It'll lay in the tide like that and if you get a fish on this end it'll attract a fish to this end and if you get a fish on that end he'll pull that through and you'll still get attraction of a fish on this end you could put two stops on if you wish it's entirely up to you that's a good little wrinkle yeah so we we'll put a lead on the end here we we'll put the hooks on here And then I pull this up, and we need that cascade to hook into that swivel, like so. And then what we do is we tighten this up, so we've got some tension on the spring. And you can use our good old crimping pliers, or you can use the breakaway tool, which I actually keep in my tackle box. 
and there you go. It's on there it is under tension, ready for casting. When it hits the water, the hooks come off, it comes out of its spring, and then it goes off down the tide. And it can slide up and down that piece of the body. And as I said before, when it drops, it goes off down the tide like that. So you get a chance of two fish. Lovely reef. Works very well on an ebb tide. If the flood is very strong, it will work on the flood tide, but it is better for the ebb tide round Eastbourne. I'll show you the other versions of this rig, um, just just so, and it's all on the end pieces. I'll take it off from here. And you can even put a clip on there if you want, so you can easily change these over. But we'll stick, we'll stick with the same one again, same body. So say you wanted to fish a, a, a panel rig with this type of short lead, short, um, short leader. Again, tie your, your blood knot on, lubricate it. Again, I'll go for 80 centimetres, but you can have it as short or as long as you like. Everything works on the cascade. And it, I mean, if you make the other rigs that uh, Gerald showed you, like the loop rig, it's basically the bottom of the loop rig. Yeah. It's Quite simple to do. Are you tying the cascade onto the end of that piece of line, or is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, if I wanted to do a panel rig, and you can use any coloured line you like. I'm doing black because I'm hoping that it's showing up better than doing it with a clear one. But I use black, clear and red for my trace. Again, so you want to fish for um, rays. Uh, I'll make that about 15 centimetres. Just measuring it off the board. And then I might put a um, bigger hook on, so a 2 -o. And then I might put a little circle, 2 -o circle hook at the top. speed on and then a, a sequin circle hook And there you have that rig. So you'd be able to put a nice fillet of mackerel on there or a chunk of bluey, whole squid, lock it up with this, twisting it around. And then we show you that hooked up. So it clips on the hook. Now, my spring is too far, or the swivel on the top of my spring is too far away. So what I can do with these crimps is just slide it down 
to where I need it. So I can constantly be changing my rigs. Excellent idea. Just need to come down a little bit more. That's it. And if you want to, you just punch it up again, or if I'm on the beach, I use my teeth. But that's basically it. That's the lead link. And once again, when, when that comes off, you've got a long a bait on a long trace that's away from the lead, and it has a small little piece of run here. So it acts as similar to a bolt loop. So that's what you use, and you can use any type of hook length on there at all. The variations are you can have the swivel with the line coming off fixed this end and then just have the clipped piece down there so you can fish it through that way but you have that fixed, you don't want it sliding and the other way I do it if I go for stingways is I actually thread the line through that swivel so it's an actual running lead right, okay. so yeah. that the, uh, the line comes through there if somebody wants that shown I can do that another day but that, that gives you a nice short bolt rig mm -hmm. uh, and it's still running. There we go. So, so as a recap, you've got 80 pound braid here. Oh no, 80 pound line on. 80 pound, that's right, line on, yeah. Uh, vine, 80 pound monofill. Yep. Yeah. And that's about how long? It's, we can measure it there, it's 35 centimetres. 35 centimetres, okay. Uh, what's that in the old money? Foot, yeah. 18, so yeah, 15. And so that, that's the, that in essence is, is like the bagnall bar, except for it's made from monofill, so there's a bit more flexibility. You've then got a line clip at the top, which is what clips to your main line. You've got a, a bead, a swivel. You've got a, is there a bead beneath that? No, spring. Okay, spring, bead, bead. sliding crimp, and then an, another free running swivel, yep. which your hook snood is attached to. That has a cascade at one end. Yep, here. So a cascade there, so you've got a short, and then a short line that goes to your your hooks. Is that right? And, and, and in this instance, it's a panel, so you've got a circle hook as a top hook and a panel. And then, what's that size? Two. Size 2-0. So 2 Okay, so size 2 This is the bigger fish. Yep. Okay, great. For fishing for rays or... Yeah. And you can bass. add whatever bling and beads you want in, in, into that. Yep. Okay, excellent. And then, so that clips onto the to the lid. Yeah. So if you, I'll be the lid, so if you just... Sorry. Okay, you then you've then got your um, cascade, which clips into the swivel that's above the spring. Which is held in place with a with a with a with a crimp, or in this instance a sliding crimp. So you've got a loop of line and then the hook snoods which are which are between here and there. So okay, so when that hits down, that releases off the lead. And it releases the whole thing, and you've got a nice flowing trace out in the tide. Yep. Okay, excellent. We will do some more of these, so leave some comments and say what you think and what you'd like to see, and we'll see if we can do it. Um, we're also going to do a session on actual baiting. Now, you know, I do show people on the beach doing it, but I do, they, they, I do get some criticism for those because people can't see what's going on. So we will, we will do it in a studio environment putting some baits onto these hooks and see how you tie them up. But in the meantime, thanks very much, Steve, for, for helping me with that. You're very welcome. And, uh, well, Anybody got any questions or suggestions, yeah. happy to hear them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And good luck with your fishing. Yeah, tight lines, everyone. So, catch you later. <laughs>